in terms of integration, well, um, I, I'd rather use how can you complement or supplement because, uh, uh, you know, it's like uh, one measure, I mean, gross domestic product, it actually measures, uh, it's a very good measure of um, economic activity in a country. But it fails to measure anything which is um, non-economic, like, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, culture or, you know, or social capital, for instance, whereas uh, gross national happiness does that. So I would rather say it's, um, you know, they would complement each other in a very good way because, uh, as I mentioned, GDP looks at the economic front and gross national happiness, on the other hand, will look at the non-economic front. So if you have two measures together, then it actually creates a robust measure of progress. You know, it's a holistic measure of progress because then you would have, you know, uh, indicators for how well you're doing economically as well, how well, as well as um, how well you're doing in terms of culture or your social capital or social connectedness and so on. Well, it all depends on the government, which kind of path they want to take. For Bhutan, now what I can do or say here is share with you the Bhutanese experiment. And uh, Bhutan, uh, we have actually adopted cross national happiness indicators, whereby we have this holistic uh, approach towards development by, you know, uh, classifying the concept into those nine dimensions of psychological well-being, health, education, living standard, time use, culture, community, good governance, and so on. So. Uh, in terms of how you want to measure happiness for Bhutan, happiness is not just the state of mind. It's not, you know, just asking and going to a person, how happy are you today? How happy you are yesterday, you were yesterday, or happy, do you find yourself down in five years? So that is not the only question that we use to measure happiness of the people. We actually use this holistic approach of looking at at all those nine dimensions, how is the condition of your mental health? How is the condition of your physical health? What kind of a community are you living in? Is it, you know, safe? Uh, what kind of social connectedness uh, you have in your family, within your community? So there are so many, it is a holistic range of, in, you know, uh, measures that we actually incorporate to measure happiness. But of course, there are some other countries we, we, who only depend on the single indicator of just asking a person how happy you are. But from a Bhutanese perspective, would say that a very holistic measure is um, followed or adopted. Now, why do we require indicators? It makes you reflect that question. We require these kind of measures because what we value is different. For instance, as a person, as an individual, or as a nation, if you value economic aspect, then you're just going to, your reference point is just going to be GDP or GNI for that matter. But because as a nation, we value culture, we value spirituality, we value community, you know, relationships, family relationships, we value all of those non-economic aspects. So that is why, um, we actually go down that path of, you know, trying to measure the non-economic. In terms of creation of happiness, there are like several ways, as I mentioned um, earlier. Firstly, is through policy, you know, focus. So by having these kind of indicators, we can actually have a policy and a, you know, planning focus on what kind of indicators are going well in the country. What, you know, how's your culture, how's your community, how's the spirituality level amongst people, how's the sense of belonging of the, you know, members of the community. So when you actually track these indicators every two or three years or every five years, then the country has a sense of where we are and which direction we are moving. So it actually, you know, it, it's very beneficial in terms of policy recommendations. Then you're able to say as a policy decision maker, okay, this is where we are going wrong. You know, there's a crime rate is increasing, maybe suicide rates are increasing because there's, you know, there's a social disconnection, there's social isolation. So all these indicators actually help us to indicate where we are going wrong, in which aspects, and then we can actually go out meet with the politicians and then policy makers, they will discuss and then formulate programs, initiatives and activities that actually improve situations in the community. That is one way of improving, you know, the quality and happiness of the people. Another way is, of course, to internalize whatever 
values are being mentioned from a GNH uh, perspective, from a happiness or a well-being perspective. So every time, every you know, the choices that you make, the decisions that you make in your life, ultimately has to boil down on what values you're inculcating in your daily lives. So that is very important. Firstly, of course, you need the policies, all the right conditions in place. But secondly, the will and the motivation of the citizens, the awareness and the mindfulness of trying to incorporate those values is equally important. I think these two things will then, uh, at the end of the day, create happiness or improve the quality of the citizens.